Hello YouTubers, this is Average Joe Video, and no, we are not taking the BX fishing. Instead, we are going to talk about the trailer mover that I have for the three-point hitch on my Kubota BX 23S. It has been a while since I've done a Kubota video. You should remember that my earlier videos featured the BX 1870 V1. So I have upgraded to the BX 23S. I actually did that approximately two years ago. I just haven't been able to get videos posted, but I'm hoping to do more as we move into the future. So today I want to take some time and just show you the benefits of having a trailer mover for the three-point hitch. Keep in mind that a three-point hitch trailer mover allows you to easily adjust the height of the ball. That makes picking up a trailer very easy. In my case, I always like to bring the swivel up a little bit because I have a portion of my yard in the back that is sloped and I don't want it to drag. But theoretically, you can get away with just simply lifting the trailer using the three point and then moving it where you want and dropping it back down without ever having to take up the swivel jack. You'll also notice that on my trailer mover, I have three different hitch ball sizes. And that makes it convenient because I have three different trailers. One requires a two and five sixteenths inch ball and two of them require a two inch ball. And the inch and seven eighths ball is on that if I need it but I found that to be the easiest instead of trying to switch entire receiver pieces every time I wanted to pick up a trailer. It just makes it super convenient. The BX23S does a great job handling it. I will tell you that they do not recommend that you use the trailer mover with a loaded trailer. Now, I think that term is kind of used loosely. In other words, I wouldn't load my tandem axle dump trailer and then try to move it with the BX, but whenever it's empty, it's not a problem. In fact, my Lamar dump trailer weighs more than my boat does. So my Lamar dump trailer empty actually weighs more than my entire boat does, unless of course I have a full 30 gallons of gas in the tank, but that's not usually the case. So why would you wanna put a trailer mover on the back of your tractor? Well, there's several reasons. The first reason is convenience. It is so convenient to use your tractor to move a trailer because if you're out mowing the yard and you wanna mow or trim where the trailer is sitting, you can easily hook onto the trailer, pick it up, move it out, drop it back down, mow the area, and then you can go ahead and pick it up again, place it back where it was. So that's one thing. The other thing is, it's so easy to see where you're going. So even though obviously the trailers that you're towing are gonna be a lot bigger than the BX itself, the great part about this is, basically we have less restricted visibility than we do in a truck. So in a truck, you know, you're worried about the pillars and you have to worry about having tow mirrors because of how big it is. Whereas the BX, you can just physically turn around and look at where the trailer is going. And if you're not lined up, it's an easy adjustment. The other reason why I recommend a trailer mover is that if your ground is swampy or soft, you don't have to worry about ripping up your yard and making ruts with your truck. Instead, you can use the Kubota. And obviously you can put the Kubota into four wheel drive if it's really muddy and that would still minimize the impact on your yard. I will point out to you that whenever I was moving the boat or I move any trailer that is heavier, and when I say heavier, I really consider anything heavier around that 2,000 pound mark or more. Um, I usually put the tractor into low and then I move it. It just gives me a lot more low end torque and I feel as though I have more control. One thing to keep in mind is, is that if you are moving a trailer on any type of a slope, you should put your tractor in four wheel drive so that whenever you are applying the brake, you know that you are going to get braking to all of the wheels essentially. That way, if for some reason, the back end would happen to bounce up in the air or slide, you still can actually apply braking power to those front wheels. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to move the boat to its location and you'll see how easy this is to use. While I am getting the tractor into position, let's talk for a moment about the specific trailer mover that I am using. So this trailer mover is from Tractor Supply. For those of you who aren't familiar, County Line is the in-house brand for Tractor Supply. This trailer mover has been great. I've owned it for approximately eight years and I've never had an issue. One thing I do wanna point out is that if you look at this trailer mover on the Tractor Supply website, there is a two and five sixteenths hitch ball that mounts to the top of the trailer mover. 
when I had my BX 1870 I had to remove that because it was interfering with the ROPS whenever I moved the three-point hitch to the up position so I never put it back on obviously with the BX 23s that's not an issue so you might be wondering why would they mount a ball at the top of the trailer mover and that's because this trailer mover is capable of moving a gooseneck trailer or even a farm wagon for that matter so while I'm not using it for that application you may find that ball at the top to be useful I just didn't need it and it was being obstructed by the ROPS on my old machine so I just removed it now you can see that I actually did raise the swivel jack in this case but technically you don't need to do that I do that because of the way I have things set up I want to make sure that I don't drag it off the ground. Theoretically, if you're moving it on a fairly level surface, you can raise the trailer up high enough that the landing gear will be in the air, and then you can simply loosen the coupler latch, and you can drop it wherever you would like. So it's not 100% necessary to raise the landing gear. That's just something that I often do because of the way that I'm parking it. The other thing that you're going to notice with a trailer mover is that it can be overwhelming at first because obviously you are moving a trailer that is much wider and much longer than the tractor itself. But just like towing a trailer behind a vehicle, you get used to this very quickly. One thing I have found out is that it sometimes is much easier to just straighten out the entire rig and then back up because oftentimes trying to correct with the tractor steering on short notice is not easy to do so you can see in this case I'm actually doing that I'm backing up I know that I'm not quite in line but if you look at how sharp the Kubota was turned it's just much easier for me to pull forward then I can correct everything and then I can watch myself on the way back and that is an advantage you can actually see the wheels in this case I can see under the deck of the pontoon boat Whereas if I was moving this with a truck, there is no way that I would be able to see that. So as you can see, I was able to get right onto those without much effort. And again, this is why you have a trailer mover. It just makes the whole process much easier. As you can see, I am now manually lowering the swivel jack. Had I left this jack in place, I could have simply unlatched the coupler and then I could have lowered the trailer mover and then I would have been able to pull away from it. Because of the way I have that block set up, I went ahead and I actually just cranked it up slightly off of the ball. Now I'm going to go ahead and lower the trailer mover carefully and then I can pull away from it. So as you can see, a trailer mover is certainly a worthwhile implement. It may seem quite simple, but it is in fact a huge time saver and you will use it much more than you think. If you like this video, be sure to smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this.